they are uh, pinned together here because of the last minute copies I had to make. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. So I looked at the spreadsheet that we were given at the last at the last meeting, at the end of our last meeting. And um, a couple of things, or a couple of points to make about the House Bill 360. Do you have a handout for us? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I forgot you guys. Got your hand. Here we go. Here we come. Um, a lot of discussion about House Bill 360. So I read the um, Ohio Legislative Service Commission final analysis of that. And by the way, House Bill. 360 has been replaced by House Bill 59 on June 30th, 2013. Um, and it does limit the number of PSAPs in, um, a county can have. <coughs> but a county our size can have three. So we are well within that limit and no one's forcing us to, to be one PSAP. Um, the bill does state though that in order to be compliant, the PSAP staff must be fully staffed with two dispatchers on duty at all times. The cost of the county doing this will be at least $320,000, 325 23 That is the 747-140, which is wages, benefits, and health um, um, columns. And I'm just going with the first year. Uh, there's 2%, the sheriff has put in 2% per, I'm, I'm on the first page of dispatch costs. So um, to be in compliance with the full, to, to the full staff piece out, It'll cost the county three hundred twenty thousand five hundred twenty-three, which is this is what the sheriff projected we will spend in twenty sixteen, minus what we are currently spending according <coughs> to page twenty-two of the feasibility study. So according to the feasibility study, we are spending four hundred twenty-six thousand six hundred seventeen dollars currently for PSAP. Okay, so so it'll cost us three hundred twenty thousand. House Bill fifty-nine says that the penalty for not complying is losing half of our wireless nine one one funds which right now is about $45,000. So not being in compliance is quite a significant money saver. There is no threat of the state coming in and taking over our services or forcing us to merge with anyone. With that being said, I really do think that the merger needs to happen. I think that it makes sense to have two dispatchers on at all times. Um, so I'm in favor of the merger, but I'm not in favor of the levy. Okay, so it isn't right to ask Eaton to contribute to the cost of our communication with the merger discussion. So I've split out the numbers the sheriff has given us into two parts. The first page is the dispatch cost, so I want to talk about those first. And the second page that you'll have is, is my analysis of the, of, of the dispatch merger with the sheriff's numbers. I used the 747-140, which is the first three columns of the dispatch cost. Um, now, I did use the feasibility study for operating costs because the operating costs on the dispatch, if you look at the dispatch page, those operating costs were only 74000 The dispatch, the operating costs on the feasibility study were 165000 which seemed to include everything like the office expenses and future tech costs. So I added on that second page, you can see the dispatcher 747-140, which is using the personnel cost of the sheriff, operating cost of 165 from the feasibility study, which adds up to the 912-140. Um, we do have the one-time transition cost of 84,000. So I still believe that a shared service agreement is the way to go to be in compliance with the state and <coughs> thus continue to receive our $45,000 in 911 money. Um, and saving the city of Eaton significant money. Um, so with no levy, I, I propose the county pays six hundred thousand, and Eaton pays three hundred thousand, and we have the the nine hundred thousand. Um, if you want to add two percent in going forward, I mean that's only two percent. That's not millions. All right. So um, as for the communication piece, all right. So does everybody? Does anybody have any questions on the dispatch piece? I did add the um, the post warranty <coughs> column from the sheriff's spreadsheet. I added that in, that's the consoles. Um, we've been told that's communication, but since the consoles started all this argument, all this all this controversy, I added it into the dispatch cost. So, either way to go. Um, any questions on the dispatch piece thus far? These are the exact numbers that the sheriff gave us um, two weeks ago. All right. The next page is communication costs. 
Um, these are all the columns from the spreadsheet the sheriff gave us. And um, right now, the sheriff told, it, told me on the, in an email that we are spending $74,000 for communication. Um, I'd like to know how we go from spending $74,000 to $477,000. I realize that we have towers to replace that cost a million dollars, but the new numbers in the capital expense column is over three million. Um, with this million dollars that we're looking at, we need to discuss, we could get a low interest loan. Our, our county has an excellent credit rating. We could get a low interest loan, spread it out over 10 years, and put those payments into the sheriff's budget and pay for those, the tower replacement that um, he says we need. Um, so, maybe, maybe someone can explain to me how we're going from 74000 to 477000 um, with only needing a million dollars for towers. Um, okay, so that's the communication piece. I asked our auditor, this last, last two pages, one of you may have two pages of the same thing, because I'm up here sorting at the last minute, so. But I asked our auditor to provide you a breakdown of who would contribute what of the 1.3 million um, left that the month study will generate. She provided me with numbers that the city would, would be bringing in. So this first page is what the total, total would bring in, 1.305, 290, 50. And the second page shows that the city of Eaton, with the levy, will bring in $215,560. Um, that doesn't even cost of our, uh, that doesn't even cover the cost of our taking their employees and training them, because I think it's going to be at least it's going to be at least $320,000 just to cover the employees the first year. So this $200,000 that the levy will bring in from Eaton doesn't even cover those costs. Um, I'm suggesting that if the levy passes, the city pays $200,000 toward the expense of the dispatch center, and this will save them more than half of what they're currently spending. Um, I also suggest that any money that we are currently spending on dispatch communication be retained in the general fund, and according to the numbers I have, which came from the sheriff either directly or via the feasibility study, we are spending um, $657,000 between communication and dispatch. Um, that's 583 from dispatch and 74 from the communication. If we pass a levy to take more money from the pockets of our residents to have a dedicated funding stream for dispatch, I think we should figure out a way to return the money that we are currently spending on dispatch and communication to the taxpayers. Uh, maybe a reduction in sales tax. That could be something we could discuss. But if we're going to take more money out of one pocket, we need to try to restore it in the other pocket. We're going to have our dedicated funding stream. And my last, my last point, and this is, my, this is a, a, a real concern of mine. <coughs> if we put this on the ballot and we don't need it, how are the people going to trust us when we do need it? When we come to them and we say, we need money. I'm, I'm saying right now from the figures, even the sheriff's figures, that we do not need a levy. The million dollars we can, we can pay for, the tower replacement we can pay for with the low interest loan, if we had a shared service agreement with Eaton, we would not be able.